You can imagine in the future what drones could do for us. Sort of Jetsons-like universe where everything is flying in all different spaces. This was a desert when we came. We will be seeing drones. 100 drones, 500 drones, 1,000 drones. Utilizing our airspace even more. The airspace is a critical component for this sector to take off. No pun intended. We've always imagined that the mode of transport that we will use is ultimately going to be up in the sky. This is what Dubai looks like today. This is what Dubai wants it to look like in 50 years. So how do they get there? Flying vehicles like drones are starting to roll out around the world. But most only fly in rural areas. How do we translate that to a city with tall buildings, ongoing construction and heavy air traffic? That's where Dubai is leading the way. Once we start flying in Dubai, it will be the most congested airspace we have operated drone deliveries in. It is roads, sky roads. If you have a virtual city, you will save millions. It's like, you know, you're building the infrastructure of an entirely new city to include the skies. Drones are faster, more efficient and greener. We like to say that every drone flight takes a polluting van off the road. At a time where it is critical to reduce our reliance on polluting forms of transportation, speed up our ability to get from A to B faster. This is the benefit of airspace. No restrictions, no congestions, no traffic lights. And deliver essential items to people and businesses that need it. Pharmaceutical companies, hospital groups, e-commerce and grocery groups. Drones might just be the answer. I'm Daniel Hosher. I'm the Strategy and Operations Manager at Skyports. Skyports is a leading drone company operating drone deliveries in countries across the world. We think Dubai is ripe for innovation with drone deliveries. It's an emirate that is known for pushing boundaries forward. A critical piece of the puzzle to ensuring drones fly across congested cities like Dubai is regulation. You need to have regulatory frameworks and safety procedures that allow drones to share the skies with other aviation users. Dubai brought private sector and government together to create a super clear framework for testing and approving drone deliveries. That all starts here at Dubai Future Labs. My name is Khalif Al-Gama and I am part of the Dubai Future Foundation leading the Robotics and Automation Laboratory. Dubai Future Foundation is a government entity commissioned with the sole purpose to make Dubai a leading city of the future. Khalifa is the head of Dubai Future Labs, a space created to test out cutting edge technologies that improve our lives. Khalifa is a big believer in building and doing things, not just talking about them. There we go. We should build you something to support that. For this project, the lab brings everyone together drone companies, software developers, and the government agencies that will help facilitate the effort. When you talk about drones and wanting them to happen, it's not only that the technology needs to be tested, but it's the regulation that needs to be tested and the built environment, the urban fabric needs to be tested. So to test out drones and other technologies, they built a city. It is a real life scenario of what will be done at scale, as opposed to flying over just empty desert. The plot of land I'm standing on right now is part of a huge development called Dubai Silicon Oasis. It's a city like anywhere else where people live, work and play. But what's unique about this city is that they built it to test out new technologies. This specific spot is where they test out unmanned aerial vehicles. Drones, flying taxis, basically anything that flies in the sky without a human behind the wheel. It's good to meet you. Welcome to our facility. And thank you so much. It's a Dubai Silicon Oasis is a uh, integrated community. We have more than 90,000 people living in DSO. So here exactly where are the drones that are not yet certified will be tested here. So how long have you been working in Dubai Silicon Oasis? I've been working here for 16 years. I remember the first day we came, we did not have even um, restaurants around here. But now we have a mall, a hospital, schools, universities. So we have it all. You can work here, live here, stay here. <laughs> This is one of the helipads. As you can see, the experimental zone, it's stretched down the line there. Saeed works for the Dubai Civil Aviation Authority and is in charge of helping to regulate the airspace. We spoke to him on the helipad at Fakih University Hospital. 
the hospital will send critical medical supplies via drone from this very spot. The challenge is buildings are going up all around the city. To solve this, Saeed combined forces with the Dubai Municipal Authority to create a digital map of the city that changes as it grows. He's working with Astra, a private unmanned traffic management system, or UTM, to create a system for directing drones through the sky. The purpose of the UTM, it guides the drones where to go, how to land. If there's any conflict with other drones, it will manage who will go up to avoid any collision in the space. Not only is Dubai regulating for vehicles to fly across the skies, it's also building the infrastructure that will support the transportation methods of the future. Buildings should have a different way of being built. You need to maybe have pockets for those drones. They should actually do the mapping for the drone to avoid areas such as hospital helipads. So we're working on that. Dubai's drone program could act as a blueprint for other cities to begin opening up their skies to electric aircraft. If we manage to demonstrate that what we want to accomplish can be done safely and at scale, I think really the sky is the limit. And transporting food, goods and people by electric vehicles flying across the sky could be a game changer for our world. It was a dream, and especially when you look at your project, which you've been working on it for a long time, you could see the dream coming true. Dubai is the city of future, so this is a starting point to enable the future to come today. The most fascinating part of this project is the pace of progress. The next five and 10 years always surprise us at where it could go, let alone 30 and 40 years down the line. To be able to actually change how societies work, implement technologies that could be meaningful to our futures.